In today's video, we embark on a journey into one of European colonialism's most haunting and darkest chapters. Brace yourselves for a story of unbridled greed, ruthless exploitation, and inhumanity that continues to cast a dark shadow over us, even today. We will focus on the infamous King Leopold II of Belgium and his merciless reign over the Congo Free State. This is the harrowing story of a monarch consumed by an insatiable thirst for power and wealth, viewing an entire nation as mere pawns to fulfill his twisted desires. Under Leopold's authoritarian rule, the Congo Free State became a living nightmare for its native inhabitants. Countless Congolese were forcibly consigned to labor camps, enduring unspeakable atrocities. Those who resisted or failed to meet the king's ruthless quotas were subjected to brutal punishments, including death and disfigurement. The exploitation was so merciless that the Congo's population decreased from 20 million to 10 million during Leopold's reign. Yet this dark history remains largely unknown, with many still unaware of King Leopold II and the horrors he inflicted upon the Congo. But as we'll discover, the legacy of his reign lingers on, impacting not just the Congo, but the entire world. This is a story that must be told. But before we delve deeper, please don't forget to show your support by liking and subscribing for more discussions on history and its enduring consequences. To understand the nightmare that unfolded in the Congo under King Leopold II, we must start at the genesis of his rule. In the late 19th century, European powers were locked in a frantic scramble to colonize Africa, exploiting its riches and people for their insatiable gains. King Leopold II of Belgium was a shrewd and ambitious ruler who saw this frenzy as his golden ticket to amassing immense wealth and power. Leopold was not just a ruthless businessman eyeing Africa's vast resources. He was also driven by a deep-rooted racism that saw black Africans as inferior to whites. In his twisted ideology, Africans were incapable of self-governance and needed European guidance to progress. This warped belief served as the justification for the unspeakable exploitation of the Congo and its people. With its abundant natural resources like rubber, ivory, and minerals, Congo was Leopold's chosen prize. In 1876, he established the International African Association under the guise of promoting scientific research and humanitarianism in Africa. In reality, this was a smokescreen for his colonial ambitions. He hired the explorer Henry Morton Stanley to lay the groundwork for Belgian control in the Congo. Stanley signed treaties with local chiefs, supposedly for trade. But these treaties, in reality, handed over control of the land and its resources to Leopold. Stanley's mission succeeded paving the way to establishing a Belgian colony in 1885, with his enormous territory spanning over 900,000 square miles in the heart of Africa. Leopold claimed the Congo Basin as his personal property, not a Belgium colony. He named it the Congo Free State, a cruel irony, as the people within it were anything but free. Leopold ruled with an iron fist, subjecting the Congolese to forced labor, brutality, and systemic exploitation. His primary interest was the rubber trade, and the Congolese were coerced into toiling on rubber plantations under horrifying conditions. They were beaten, mutilated, and killed for failing to meet daily rubber quotas. Leopold's cruelty extended to other resources such as copper and diamonds, with the profits transferred to his pocket. Forced labor extended to deadly construction projects like the Mata di Kinshasa Railway, where thousands perished due to disease, starvation, and brutal treatment. Leopold also maintained a private army to ensure his rule was adhered to in the most brutal possible way. This army was notorious for its brutality and its soldiers were known to commit horrific acts of violence against Congolese men, women, and children. His agents employed a variety of tactics to terrorize the Congolese population. Some cut off the hands of those who fell short of quotas, while others held family members hostage until quotas were met. Instigating conflicts between ethnic groups was another tactic deployed to sow discord and fear. The Congo Free State became synonymous with unspeakable horror and reports of these atrocities eventually reached Europa and the United States, sparking outrage and condemnation. In response, the Congo Reform Association was formed, 
compressing activists who tirelessly campaigned to end the atrocities in the Congo. Nevertheless, Leopold attempted to justify his actions by portraying himself as a benevolent civilizer, supposedly bringing order to a savage land. These justifications were nothing but thinly veiled excuses for his exploitation and oppression. Leopold bled the Congo dry for his gain, and the Congolese paid the price with their lives. One of the darkest incidents during his reign was the Lusanga Massacre in 1895, where his agents killed over 300 villagers, including women and children, for failing to meet impossible rubber quotas. The horror didn't stop at violence. Leopold's agents introduced diseases like smallpox and sleeping sickness, devastating the population. They tore apart Congolese society's social and economic fabric, eradicating cultural traditions and forcing people to abandon their way of life. It's estimated that up to 10 million people perished due to Leopold's policies, roughly half the population of the Congo at the time. Courageous individuals like journalist Edmund Morel and missionary Roger Casement finally exposed the horrors of the Congo Free State. Morel, a British shipping clerk, uncovered evidence of forced labor and founded the Congo Reform Association in 1904 to raise awareness and advocate for change. Roger Casement, a British consul, investigated allegations of human rights abuses, discovering widespread torture and murder. His damning casement report brought the Congo's plight to global attention and pressured the British government to take action in 1908. Leopold's brutal reign over the Congo ended in 1908 when Belgium assumed control of the colony, driven by international outrage. However, the Congolese people endured further suffering under Belgium's colonial rule with independence finally achieved in the mid-20th century. Brave Congolese activists like Simon Kimbangu, who fought against slavery and oppression, and Patrice Lumumba, who led the nation to independence in 1960, bear witness to the indomitable spirit of the Congolese people. Leopold's legacy is one of ambition, greed, and cruelty. Looking at his legacy from two perspectives, we can say that, on the one hand, he is remembered as a visionary leader who transformed Belgium into a modern industrialized nation. He significantly promoted economic development, expanded the railway network, and modernized the country's infrastructure. On the other hand, Leopold's reign in the Congo stained his name irreparably. His insatiable thirst for wealth and power led to the deaths of millions and untold suffering. His regime's brutal treatment of the Congolese people has been widely criticized and his actions in the Congo have been described as nothing short of genocide as we have seen. We cannot forget the resilience and bravery of the Congolese people, who resisted and fought against this oppressive colonial rule through the anti-slavery campaigns of the early Congolese. From activists like Simon Kimbangu to the uprising led by Patrice Lumumba, the people of Congo have shown that they will not be silenced or oppressed. As we reflect on this dark chapter, we must acknowledge the enduring legacy of colonialism and its global impact today. We can only build a more equitable and just future for all by confronting the past, seeking justice, and working toward reconciliation. Thank you for joining us on this emotional journey. Please like and subscribe for more thought-provoking discussions on history and its lasting repercussions in our world. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. See you all in my next video.